my name is Dr. Larry Graham. Thank you for joining us here at the hey, uh, at, uh, Think Tech Hawaii's wonderful program. Uh, Don't just age, engage. And that's my personal program for you all in which I explore the issues of aging, mostly from the internal point of view. What are you doing that is the best practice for you in aging in this community and in this culture? Today, we are going to explore one of those people. We're going to ask about that from one person, a very good friend of mine named Philip McManus. Philip will join us in just a bit. But what I'm doing is saying that it's most important for us to look at models that we can claim opportunity that present us with opportunities to grow and to function in ways we want to. We are excellent as Western civilization at uh, studying the problem. We study problems until we don't know what we're looking at sometimes. But what, we, what I like to do is to study solutions, study examples of people who are in fact aging in such a way that their life is what they would call full and wonderful and that we would look at and say that is pretty extraordinary. Philip McManus, welcome to my program. Thank you so much my friend for joining me here today and uh, and sharing some of your story with us and I've always said that the most important thing we can do is tell our story, and you do such a beautiful job. Philip, would you just do an, an introduction for our video viewers? Well, thank you for having me, as they say in, in Nepal, namaste. <laughs> um, I've known Larry since we were in high school, <clears throat> and we ended up in Hawaii together back and forth. Um, I've been traveling quite a bit. Um, I've been in music since college, which let me travel all over the place. And then I got involved in video uh, over the last 10 years or so and started chronicling what I was doing. And um, that's basically the place I came from. Music is a great way to meet people because it goes right to their heart and they forget that you're watching them too. Mm. So what kind of music do you like the most? What do you, what is the music that is your music? You know, my father was a pipe organ builder and concert organist of some repute. So I was in piano and cello and voice up through college and picked up guitar at 19. And that became my money-making instrument, but also my most passionate instrument. Although I still play the cello, um, it's an approximation playing the cello because I haven't played for about 35 years. So when you're putting your finger down on the on the, the, the fingerboard, it's wherever your finger is where the note is. So you're constantly making and creating a new note every time you put your finger down as opposed to a piano key. So uh, I would call it an approximation, a very humbling experience because you're never in tune, but it sure feels good. And it's not a question of arrival. It's a question of being somewhere around kind of how it works. Uh, uh, so I would say I love cello. I'm playing classical music, but my own music and, and guitar, I, I can't tell you what it is, but I have these beautiful guitars I've acquired over the years that seduce me constantly to play them. Well, that sounds like a good description for what I would say is the aging process can't really don't know what you're going to get to it's maybe not going to be the exact note but you're in the process of getting to it yeah. well there is yeah there is no exact note i guess it's all an approximation and a, a, a quest or a, not even a quest just a discovery there is no arrival there's a wonderful quote that goes when you <clears throat> seek outcomes you get consequences <laughs> it doesn't work out the way you always want or really yeah. does it Philip has, uh, to the viewers, I want to say, Philip has made some tremendous, um, I think, accomplishments in his elderhood. He uh, not only enjoys the, the music he produces, but he also has some achievements that he's made. And I'd like to get to those in a little bit. We'll share a little bit of video of what he's done, um, where he's been over the past few years. And, um, and the encouragement that he brings, I think, to anyone who knows him. 
he has been an inspiration for me. Uh, I am here in Hawaii because he invited me to come. And it was his adventurous spirit that um, helped to turn me into an adventurer myself. And I hope that you can find in this few minutes some of that same electricity about his, his life and his adventuresome spirit. But tell me, Philip, tell the viewers, if you will, what do you think is the most important thing to hold on to for, or what has been the strongest um, motivator or, or enabling factor for you in your uh, elder years now to, uh, to have such a fulfillment, such a strong and adventuresome life? Well, I never considered myself to be an age, not having had children, you don't get to measure yourself in the age in the aging of your own children <clears throat> first. So um, it would be elderhood to me has been more a matter of change, things changing in me and recognizing it, but I didn't associate it with anything in particular. So it's a matter of how do I, I'll never play volleyball again, really. I'll never run again, but I did a lot of that for years, but realizing that developing my passions in many ways, not just in volleyball or running or something physical, but other things that I can do, uh, just shift that passion off to something else. It's not a question of, of um, my favorite uncle was a Baptist minister, uh, Uncle Theron, who died first, regretfully, of my half dozen Baptist minister <laughs> uncles I had <laughs> from my mother's sisters. And on his deathbed, we were all standing around, the family around his, his deathbed, I being a half generation younger than my siblings, uh, second litter. And I listened to the stories I'd never heard. And then in a pause, Theron, Uncle Theron said in a small voice, I think my life is just a collection of my loves. I am what I love. And I was 19 and you're always kind of looking for yourself at that age if you're lucky. And at that moment, I found myself. I am what I love. So the essence was not what I loved, that I loved. The act of loving keeps you uh, um, supple, keeps you wiggling. My father died at 91, and he says age affects only those who are not children. And to be a child, you have to be curious. Mm. And to, be, to allow yourself to be curious. <clears throat> We are taught so many things in life, uh, like what's going to happen. You know, I don't know what's going to happen, as if something bad can happen, you know. And then we have to define the word bad and good, and yeah, yeah, which is worth discussing at some point. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Philip. Those are inspiring words. And I would like to highlight for the audience that, as a personal coach for life and faith, a personal coach for your elderhood. I want to coach people into extraordinary elderhoods. And, but I, I see this phase of life as being a, indeed a stage. And you had your childhood, you had your adolescence, you had your adulthood, and now you have your elderhood. And when we look at elderhood as a, or aging as a stage of life, it simply has its own unique characteristics, which each of us has to explore and, and discover ourselves. We once again ask the question, who am I? Who am I at this stage of life? And the answers that we come up with are um, what help guide us in the decisions that we make. So um, having a certain excitement about that, having a discovery, and having a confidence in what you discover, I think, is very important. And, and um, <clears throat> Philip embodies that in so many ways, that confidence that whatever comes, comes, and he'll make it through. Now, you've had some physical issues, uh, physical <laughs> occurrences, uh, problems. Don't need to enumerate them, but what has helped you be so resilient dealing with these uh, physical problems? I, I think, first of all, accepting the fact that I'm, uh, they say that uh, life is a sexually transmitted disease with a fatal prognosis. So once I have accepted the fact that I'm riding on a, 
on a mortal uh, body that's slowly falling apart and accept that to be part of the game, uh, then it's no longer an issue. Um, it's also a question of not having things have to work out in a certain way for me to be happy. Uh, I was hiking around in the Tyrol with my friend Stephanie when I started feeling really, really bad. And I said, man, these pills I'm taking for my high blood pressure really are making it difficult to move around. Turned out I was having a heart attack. But in the course of it, I, first of all, I didn't get to eat my, my goulash and wonderful salad that was served to me really irritated me. But I made it to the hospital and met the most interesting people. <laughs> and I got to watch them do the, the stint at my arm. And but, so it really had nothing to do with anything because that was another amazing experience. And happily, I'd gotten traveler's insurance two days previously. So... Whew, that helped for some of it anyway. <clears throat> um, so, I hear, so, so I hear two things right now, Philip. And one is um, not to expect outcomes and um, to conform to what you want, but to be resilient uh, with whatever comes. And then the other to be um, be confident in what 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 you can manage. Um, that you, whatever comes, you're gonna you're gonna deal with it in some ways. That am I hearing you correctly? To you to a point, but the point being, there's nothing to deal with. It's uh, I'm not the uh, I'm not what happens. I'm what I'm watching what happens, but I am not what happens. I'm the watcher. This is oh look what look Philip's going into operation right now. <laughs> But that's not me. I mean, it's it's uh, it's carrying me around. It's like I'm watching HBO or, or Netflix. You know, it's my life I'm watching. But it didn't. Yeah. It, yeah. If that makes any sense at all. Maybe I was in Nepal too long. <laughs> and part of part of the game you said is is that this this body does change, and this yes. body does um, does have its own decline. Uh, we would call it decline, or it's. I'd like to think of it as transformations and, and transitions. Okay, we speaking, well, Okay. go ahead. We were speaking earlier about that, about uh, when you're young, uh, you start gaining new uh, talents and experiences and strength that you didn't even miss because you never knew you could have them. But then as you grow older, you start losing these things. But then again, you have other talents and skills that are infinitely more developed than when you were a child. Uh, so to let the things go that aren't relevant anymore and really focus on what I'm into and able to be yes. into. Yes, yes. And, and what he has been into, my friends, is pretty <laughs> phenomenal itself. Uh, one of the things that I can report to you that he did was to uh, organize a canal trip, two, well, a couple of canal trips uh, in, uh, in France. Philip, tell us about the canal trip, the one that we're going to view. We're going to view some of this video of this. This was on the Canal du Midi, which is a canal that was built in the late 1700s, early 1800s to connect uh, the Atlantic with the Mediterranean, avoiding having to go around, around Spain, the Iberian Peninsula, to get from one place to another. I had owned the riverboat in Hamburg, a hundred foot long 1922 river boat that I just stumbled across uh, or splashed across uh, back in 2000 and had it for several years and learned how to really manage a flat bottom boat. So I hired a, a ship and had um, two ships actually and had my friend Stephanie captain one and I captained the other. And for two weeks, we navigated this canal, uh, which has um, bicycle paths on the sides, and um, we only went like 130 miles in two weeks. So, uh, uh, but it's, it's such a rich <laughs> environment, which maybe the video might show you. And I had a drone that I've really been enjoying uh, that I did some video <laughs> with. In any case, that was the trip. I had eight women with me between 21 and 80, mm -hmm. and I would not recommend that. <laughs> but, uh, the lone male, but it, we uh, but we had a good time. We're going to look at the video in just a minute, a couple of minute video. But um, 
you have another trip coming up that you're gonna uh, going to uh through. yeah I'm, i think i do a repeat for those of us who've gotten our second shots in september hopefully france will be back open if not we will just delay it get our money back and and go later uh but do it again because there are things i didn't get to see now that i know more about it uh okay good and i don't know what you're going to have in my my stuff below but uh i have lots of videos from this on my youtube channel so on your youtube channel okay well and well let's go to the uh to the to the video now we need to okay <laughs> things that I think is spectacular is to be able to do that kind of a trip in our elderhood. But one of the things that I'm most amazed at, Philip, is that you took something that's been a part of you for many years and and just three years ago, three years ago, I think it was, just created this event and this opportunity for people. Um, it was, did I mention that he's adventuresome? <laughs> I should did, tell you that uh, I had just had neck surgery the week before from having been hit by a car in Chinatown in Honolulu, but uh, that was that was fine. And also, the two of the women who are in that are gone now; they died, and they were you know seventy nine and eighty one. So, so they were living their elderhood. They did it. They said, "Oh man, I can barely walk." Oh. But they were fine. I mean, they were they drank more than I did, you know. <laughs> So take advantage of it because one never knows what our time schedules are. Yeah, especially with that, you're sitting most of the time and you're getting a tour. You don't have to pack up and go to a hotel. You're, where you're traveling is where you're staying, you know, your mode of transportation. Now along the canal, you, you uh, disembarked into various villages and while you were in the villages, did you learn anything or? I learned I like uh, uh, Beaujolais more than. <laughs> All right. I, what did I learn? I learned that there's a natural support to life. That you don't have to 
know why the water supports you. You just have to know that it does, you know. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, and everybody learned as they went, they were still growing, they were still coming to new understandings. And um, yes and no, actually, they, uh, a lot of issues came up that, you know, when you're living your, what you love, you also uncover things that you haven't dealt with. But because we were in a group, it was talked about, you know, you can only be polite for three days, I think. <laughs> and we were together for 14. Yeah. You know? Wow. And with lots of things changing. So there were some people acting out, but the group took care of them, you know, and everybody was delighted by the end of the trip. So that's wonderful. But that itself is such a learning experience, in my opinion, being able to grow from self revelation and self understanding. And uh, sometimes uh, getting outside of our comfort zones and being dislocated into another place can be the opportunity to uh, have that growth experience. I think yes. they were fortunate, fortunate to have you along and, and sensitive to that dynamic. So we go from there to another amazing adventure. Now this adventure is a bigger part of your past. Tell us something about this, would you? Um, I have a, wow. Well. I have, when I first went to Europe, I, um, I have a private club that I've had, making it practical to have fun. <clears throat> and um, I first went to Europe meeting a woman online 24 years ago, and we had a food stand in the town square of Hamburg, and um, we're selling lobster and champagne. Everybody else is selling, selling bratwurst and beer and pretzels. And it was kind of like a fishing expedition to meet interesting people. And I met a guy who was doing expeditions with the mere submarines, these mini submarines that go down six kilometers uh, uh, in the, under the <laughs> sea. Uh, and this was right after um, the Soviet Union had come apart pretty much. And these guys were having a difficult time. So he hired these ships to do interesting tours and he was doing the Bismarck, I mean, doing the Titanic uh, with these submarines charging 35,000 a pop. And I said, well, hey, Mike, can I sell some of these trips on the internet, the new internet? And he said, sure, and I sold a bunch, got a nice commission. And he said, where should we go next? Well, I've been in the military, European military history for years. And I said, how about the Bismarck? I know it's been just discovered. And he said, sure, why don't you come? Really? So we, he organized everything and I came along uh, and we had been, the Bismarck had been discovered by Robert Ballard, but never explored. He had a camera on a string to, to see it. We went down with these two mirror submarines with their big lights and it was three hours down, three hours up, eight hours on the bottom on a two meter wide space with three of us inside this titanium ball yeah. flying around. We got stuck underneath the propellers and the back. <laughs> The other sub had to come tell us how to back out properly. It was very wonderfully exciting. Wow. But, um, oh, Philip, we, we, uh, there's going to be a question after this video. And then I want to okay. turn to you. Thank you for okay. the, I'm thankful for the viewer for asking a question. We'll get to it after this video. But in this yes. video, Philip also has, is um, reciting a poem that he wrote that he, having been moved by this experience, right, Philip? Correct. Well, let's go directly to the video then now, Melissa. Thank you. We descend three miles to the ocean floor, aliens from a different orb to a world beyond mortal cycles, untouched by waves, winds, or storms, nights or days, seasons, nations, lives or generations to a quiet place whose darkness has remained untempered by sun, moon, or stars a darkness that has prevailed long before earthly life had remembered itself. We have found a lost prop from a long closed play and with it the final scene from that lost director's cut. I am a member of the last undeserving audience of a few souls for thousands once had attended some 60 years ago. The giant sunken ship, again seen by mortals who briefly give her back her name and her story, is no longer just a strangely shaped stone among many, or a garden for delicate anemones. 
but for a few hours becomes the silent echo of past dreams and glory, terror, fire, destruction and despair, all projected onto her through 17 centimeter thick portals. Our alien lights briefly materialize a tapestry of rusticles and flowering creatures rivaling the beauty of Buddha's sand mandalas which fade again into timeless darkness as we turn away. All my life I've known the story of the Bismarck in her final days, imagining her fine and proud as if she had never died. But that image has been ruined as I see her broken in her open coffin, just as, after seeing my mother cold and dead, it took me years to remember her any other way. For me, the memory of the Bismarck shall be the same, so much for glory and for fame, a hero's death, both slayer and the slain. Now the spirit lies not on the ship, but with the men who sailed her, once former foes, we worked together to write this final chapter. It is my honor to have met them. We have made these memories treasure. The men who sailed them. Oh my gosh, Phil. That really, <laughs> that got me in my throat. <laughs> It gets me all the time. And that boot, that single boot, was very moving to me to see that. Uh, that's a profound experience and um, one that you hope to replicate, do a repeat? We can if we had the people that wanted to do it. I, I, I know the, the folks that do it. <clears throat> Made friends with a lot of Russians. For some reason, I've been hanging around Russians for years. Uh, We've hired a 315 foot tall ship for six weeks in the Eastern Caribbean 20 years ago, all sorts of stuff. So, and they're Russian run, but uh, yeah, we can yeah, do would it. We, would we address, uh, direct people to oceanographica.com? Uh, actually, my email would be good, the best way to go. Okay, check it out with his email. We do have one question from a viewer, which I'd love to, to have fun. you respond to, please. And that is um, how to, pick a destination for an adventurous trip like the one you described. How did you hear of such a destination? And then what did you consider as you were deciding that it would be your next destination? What were your considerations for that choice? This I is about the, the French trip. I knew the canal, did, I had gone the year before in Burgundy, uh, but being a canal guy, I knew the Canal du Midi existed but didn't uh, think in terms of hiring a boat and putting my friends uh, on board with me. Uh, so it's, it's, it's sort of, uh, what's your heart's desire? What are the, what's on the periphery? What's, what's saying, oh, you're saying, oh, I can't possibly do that, but it's very attractive. Like the beautiful woman across the dance floor, you've got to go over and walk to her and say, would you like to dance? At worst, they'll say no. But you can always investigate. That's important. What what makes you crazy? What sounds good? And see if it's possible. Sometimes it isn't, but it's amazing. Much more is possible than you think. <laughs> Philip, that is spectacular. And I am so grateful that you've been on, on my show here and able to, to uh, really share part of yourself and part of your, in, in, along with your interests. Um, thank you very much for those questions viewer and we will i hope we answered for you if not please connect with philip's email at i'd be, delighted. I'd be delighted yeah i'd be delighted I, I stepped on you sorry philip's email at yahoo.com and so every two weeks uh we have don't just age engage to encourage you to have the most extraordinary elderhood you possibly can make it be uh, thank you to, to Think Tech Hawaii for their wonderful support, for their wonderful encouragement. Thank you to Philip McManus for joining with me. And we look forward to seeing you back here in two weeks. Aloha. Blessings.